Everybody knows there's not a better time of year Hear that sleigh Santa's on his way Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny along with Christina Chavez and Merry Christmas. Today we have the director of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation with us. Hey man, how you doing? Uh, okay, yeah, um, living in the past, uh, obviously, since this, <laughs> this episode is in the future. So uh, I'm good, confused and fine. <laughs> yeah, how you doing, Christina? I'm doing great, Doug. Thank you so much for inviting me along on this interview today. I'm really excited. Yeah, I hope you're having a good holiday season so far. Definitely. Christmas is my favorite time of year. Definitely. So, uh, Jeremiah, tell us what you're most famous for. Um, I, I could not answer that question since that would require me to kind of be outside of myself and have a vision of myself that is somehow attached to how people perceive me. And believe me, that's not a healthy place for anyone, especially not me. Just rather stay in my own bubble and uh, keep my, my foot to the uh, pedal which then hopefully will be to the metal and just keep working and making as, as interesting uh, choices as I can. Good way to look at it. So uh, where are you originally from? I was born in uh, Montreal, Quebec, and uh, you know, moved to Toronto after that, then New York, then uh, Milan, Paris, London, back to New York, then Los Angeles, where I've been for a long time. Really interesting. So you've been all over the place, right? I've been, uh, been to plenty of places. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, you know, there's still plenty of places to go, uh, albeit more difficult lately uh, with COVID airline craziness and uh, all of that. All right. So uh, what was your upbringing like? Um, my upbringing was like, how to describe it? Um, you know, both parents worked. Um, I went to a parochial school that, you know, had me in school from eight to five. So very, you know, a very intensive uh, educational focus, um, you know, uh, just to be, Excellent. And uh, that's not to say I was, but <laughs> driven that way. Um, and, uh, you know, s uh, kind of second generation, my grandparents were kind of Russian and, and uh, Polish and, you know, Romanian and a whole Hungarian. So it's like all of that Eastern Europe stuff was surrounding me. And, and you know, we lived in an um, extended family, my grandparents. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say a reasonably tight family, um, a lot of, uh, you know, we didn't have that much money, but uh, we did okay. You know, we were sort of lower middle class, I guess, many families living on a, on a single kind of uh, store at the point. Um, when I was very young, I grew up in a bowling alley. My mother flipped burgers, my father <laughs> ran the shop, gambling in the back, pin boys actually lining it up. So um, it was... Uh, Certainly not in the realm of any of my dreams that I would become a filmmaker. That's for sure. Okay. How'd you get your role in National Lampoon and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Uh, are you asking me how I got the job to direct it? Is that your question? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, I was involved, uh, you know, I... I had carved out a very interesting, um, I guess, a gig for myself over the years uh, in advertising as a commercial director, uh, living in New York, and then uh, continuing to kind of be very, I guess, successful uh, in commercials uh, after I moved to LA as well. And uh, that led to uh, inquiries um, about uh, 
the possibility of me maybe doing some long form work. I have at that point was very, you know, certainly intrigued and really wanted to do it because when I was at university, I studied theater. Um, I grew up kind of, uh, you know, musically, I can read and write music. So there was that. Um, my father was a photographer, both professionally before I was born and then um, kind of a great hobbyist. Um, he recorded a ton of stuff on a 16 millimeter movie camera and a Rolly Flex to an a quarter camera, which I still have. And uh, so I had a background in photography and lighting and all of that. Um, so it was with some uh, inquiries from Warners uh, to take on a small film. I wanted to make it small um, uh, about the Apollo Theater in New York. Um, and that was to be funded by Warner Brothers. And I wanted it to be small. I didn't want it to be a big movie. I uh, just wanted it to be a little personal movie. I don't think nowadays a you know a white boy like me could ever get a gig like that anyway, directing a movie about the Apollo. But anyway, uh, one thing led to another. The script turned out really well, and uh, the uppity ups at uh, Warner Brothers, Terry Simmel, uh, in that case, uh, wanted uh, wanted it to be a bigger movie. And um, I didn't really want to do a bigger movie of it because I think the conceit of the movie as I had imagined it um, was about unknowns. And if I kind of put together some stars, you know, they were asking, you know, well, why don't you get Whitney Houston? Because I had done a bunch of Whitney Houston <laughs> Diet Coke commercials, so I knew her. They wanted to go in that direction. I didn't. And uh, so I, I kind of uh, passed. And, and um, but... You know, they, they ended up circling back after a few years. But what happened was I, over the course of the development process, to, you know, had a very strong relationship at Warner's. They, they, they thought, well, this, this kid is, maybe he's ready. Maybe he's ready to direct something. So they started to send me scripts. And the script that I really liked was Christmas Vacation. I thought John Hughes's draft, that uh, the first draft that I had read, was just hilarious, really funny. I'd never done any comedy before. So I... I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting challenge. You know, I always thought I was doing really kind of cool, long land, sexy commercials. <laughs> Here's like a very broad comedy. And like, I thought, well, I'm sort of the wrong guy for this, but I'll go for it. And, uh, you know, I met with John, met with Chevy, a uh, studio liked me already. And uh, lo and behold, boom, landed in my lap. And I, I had to make it. So I did. That's awesome, man. Fire away, uh, Christina. Yes. So my first question for you is what was the process of directing that movie, you know, once you got approved and got the ball rolling, that production was going to happen? Well, I mean, you know, uh, directing Christmas Vacation is no different than directing what I've just finished directing, you know, a month ago. It, you know, the process uh, is, is one that... Um, one's responsibility is just to get the best work out of one's team to hire a team of, of professionals, each one, uh, you know, specializing in an asset that you probably know enough to be dangerous, but not as much as them in terms of light or in terms of music or in terms of design. Uh, and then, so there's assembling the team, there's casting, um, which means reading actors and going through the process of selecting your actors, those who had not been already attached to it through the, um, through the, you know, previous movies. Um, so there's, the, you know, there's a lot of, of that interaction. Uh, there's managing the studio and the budget, uh, something that I had a lot of familiarity uh, because of my experience in commercials and in a commercial company. And so I, I know what it costs to shoot for a day or an hour or a minute. <laughs> you know, I know what that money's like. And so managing the budget and knowing what that was. And, you know, obviously, you know, you want to push the studio as far as it can be. But I always wanted it to be fundamentally shot on a back lot. That was something that was important to me for the most part. Uh, so I wanted to have that old Hollywood feel. I mean, as much for myself as the experience. Um, 
so you just put that all together and there's months of preparation and then you you know you get onto the uh floor of the set and you have to manage a lot of the egos uh, a lot of the issues especially if you're a first-time director on a feature you know you, you can be challenged uh and you've got to be ready to be challenged you've got to be ready to take control and you know i'm uh, I feel that I'm kind of fearless in that mode. And so, you know, I, I basically made the movie I wanted to make. Uh, you know, uh, John Hughes got busy on, I think he was doing writing Home Alone or, you know, one of those. Oh, no, it was Uncle Buck. That was it. He went off to do Uncle Buck. So I was basically, he was my producer and he was around for the, some of the prep, but he lived in Chicago, shooting in LA. We talked often, like almost every couple of days. Um, and then he came for the first couple of days of shooting. Then he had to go back to Chicago, and make Uncle Buck. So basically, I had um, I had the kind of nine hundred pound gorilla behind me. Uh, he wanted to make as producer the movie that I wanted to direct. And so I, I felt very empowered, and I walked onto the set with that feeling. And, um, you know, I love the script and it evolved really beautifully. Um, and so I, I was very happy with how we cast. So I, the, the actors were just delightful to work with. Um, and then, you know, off we went. Every day was a little different. There's always kind of quirks and issues that happen along the lines of, of you know, just the, the, the craziness of shooting. Um, but, you know, outside of clashes often with Beverly, um, you know, everything else is kind of good. But Beverly and I really resolved years later when we did the, the video of it. And, and uh, we just had the greatest time in the world when we did the kind of uh, narration for, I think, you know, the DVD anniversary. Um, and so that was funny. Um, you know, now I understand her frustration uh, in that part, she's a wonderful actress, and she's quite a, a great dramatic actress. And you know, here was a very commercial pop movie. I think she felt really constrained by that kind of number two role, and thought oh, this this kid, he's good to take it out on. But I wasn't having any of that. <laughs> you know? So that that explained some of it. But she was great in the movie. In other words, she she brought it, and it wasn't like she walked through it. But um, you know, when I I watched the movie and I watched it very recently. You may uh, wonder why. Uh, because uh, Warner's um, decided that they wanted to restore it uh, to a pristine and modern, unbelievable uh, levels. Uh, sorry. Um, for a re-release at uh, Christmas in limited markets, but that will be the 4K version, 5.1 stereo. And we... They went to the original negative, they rescanned it, and I got to color time the entire movie on stage again. And I got, and they went back to the original sound stems, and I got to remix it. Some of the people had been there for the original mix and remembered me. And so it was an amazing experience um, pulling all that detail out of the negative. It looks, I, I got to say, I mean, people haven't seen it yet, but it, it looks like it was shot yesterday. It looks so good. And I say this, wow, I say this, I'm getting excited about it. Um, I say this, not because I did it, you know what I mean, to Mackerman uh, shot it, but it just looks gorgeous. And it sounds gorgeous because at that time, we'd only do like, you know, stereo mix. So if, you know, um, Beverly was in the, Ellen was in the kitchen and there was some sound, it would be sort of a stereo and she says, oh, you know, your, your father, your grandfather's over there. But now with the 5.1, I could put the um, sound very deliberately into a very specific corner. So you really get the architecture of the house. It was really satisfying. It was really fun. Well, it definitely he has evolved into a pop culture icon that, you know, my aunt and uncle actually every year at Christmas have matching sweatshirts with uh, the quote from the movie about the, uh, the carpet being wet. And, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's a really, 
<laughs> thrilled with that. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you know, when I did, it was my first movie, so I didn't have really the experience of what it is to open a movie, how special it is, you know, if it's going to work and, you know, what the grosses are and all of that stuff. And so it was a real introduction, you know what I mean? I remember the, the you know, the, the night it opened was, you know, particularly fun and, and you know, just to go to theaters and see it with a paying audience was really great seeing lines around the block that was fun i mean it's very uh, engaging i mean it's you work so long so hard on movies and then to see it succeed is really really great the opposite is also true <laughs> Everybody knows there's not a better time of year. Hear that sleigh. 